Hello and welcome to the video. Today I'm going to be showing you what you need as well as how to do the hand painted detail on your resin printed RC car body. Now this one here, well I didn't show the previous steps on how to get to here, but it is painted and clear coated. I like doing the hand painted detail over top of this for multiple reasons. One, uh, it's easy to fix an error. Something like uh, the pen drops out out of one of the valley lines. Uh, you can either smear it or let it dry and use acetone. And the clear coat that I use should be good enough that it can handle a little bit of acetone. Uh, the next thing as well is that if you do it on top of the clear coat, uh, anything that's supposed to be matte, like let's say we're going to have a lot of plastic back here, uh, Best to keep that matte looking so it actually looks like plastic rather than all just glossy black. And that's really about it. I mean, obviously there's some downfalls to that to where it's easier to come off. But I guess that could be a separately put on matte coated clear coat. But I don't do that and I certainly, these being resin... Yeah, chances are a crash that is going to chip paint like that is probably going to break the body well before. So, let's get into what we need. And the first thing that we're going to need are paint pens. Now, I have quite the collection here. And these obviously aren't all of them, but these are the ones that I tend to always have with me whenever I am painting these cars. I'm gonna move some of these wheels out of the way. However, let's at least put them into categories here. So then you don't need all of this. All right, I got my paint pens here into six different categories. The first one, probably the most important one, is the straight blacks. These ones are just standard painter's brand that you can find at Hobby Lobby or Walmart. These ones were specifically at Walmart. Now, the color, the exact color you get out of these is mixed. This one right here is a little on the runnier side, so when it dries, it becomes more of a matte, straight black. Whereas this one uh, is more glossy. So there is a point to using two different ones, as well as knowing which yours is capable of doing. Uh, something like this I'm going to be using for the outside rim of windows, so make it look like gaskets and stuff, as well as the grill. Whereas something like this will be used on the windshield and the rear windshield only to pretty much be that uh, sun-shaded part. It'll be glossy considering that it's underneath the glass, or to mimic underneath the glass. Now this one right here, this is our plastic color. These are metallic black colors that I got at Hobby Lobby. Now I think Amazon sells this brand too, as well as Michael's. But pretty much um, this one right here is probably the easiest to explain as it is a kind of like a felt tip pen. So it makes it nice to ride any edges if necessary. However, these two, they are at least in terms of packaging, identical. However, one is a felt tip, and the other is kind of like a synthetic tip. I gotta make sure I'm actually showing these on camera. It's gonna be painful if they're not. But either way, I'll show this one just in case it wasn't on camera. There we go. Yeah, nothing on the packaging when you are buying these will tell you which is which and they do have their benefits and disadvantages. The synthetic tip one uh, is tends to be a little stronger in terms of dripping paint, well, or laying paint, so it's not gonna be as matte. However, the felt tip one I like a lot better because the felt tip allows you to ride a contour, so the around the side windows specifically, I make a lip around the windows. This is so then you can lay plastic paint that lay this pen around it. So pretty much what I did to knowing that this was going to happen when I went to Hobby Lobby, I bought five pens and 
The first one I opened had the synthetic tip, the second one had the felt tip. So, I have that. Next set, and the ones that I love the most, chrome. These are Molotow Liquid Chrome Pens. These can be found at Hobby Lobby as well. They are a little more expensive, however, the chrome is worth it. Um, I use this to mimic headlights that aren't going to have, that aren't clear, as well as chrome badging. Uh, this car, yeah, we got the Volkswagen badge up front, and we do have the GTI badge, as well as exhaust. So we are definitely going to be using the chrome on here. Um, I tend to always forget to do this, but you could also do the mirror on the mirrors. And we have two fog lights there that we can use that for. But yeah, I have a 2mm. This has the felt tip that I like. As well as a 1mm that has this interesting synthetic type. And so something like the 2mm I would use for exhaust. Just something larger. And then the 1mm can be used for badging. Alright, these ones, we probably start getting into where you can buy one or not, or the other. So this one here is a little harder to get. It's a Gundam marker. These usually come in sets. Now, this the set that comes with this, other than the metallic black that comes with it that I previously used for plastic, um, you're probably not going to use anything from it for these unless you want to do fancy titanium exhaust where it has that different colors. But other than that, there is no need to go out and buy this. However, some form of metallic amber would be a good pen to get. However, the chances of getting one of those is rather rare. So sometimes in turn, when the side indicators are not being placed on a clear item or underneath a chrome or on top of chrome, I go and use this. Now this is just a straight orange Sharpie paint pen. So, yeah, it's going to look a little cartoony because it's not metallic, amber, or see-through, but when you just need a strong color that's going to look, look like a turn signal, because unless you put this over clear or chrome, it's going to blend into the paint pretty bad. Now we come to the red. I do not have a metallic red to try and mimic a tail light. However, because... I do, and this is probably something I should have included on here, but because I do it underneath the clear coat, I wasn't going to show it, but a red sharpie or soft highlighter, that works to do the tail lights. You could do them on top of the clear or underneath the clear, it'd be cool if the phone could, uh, whatever. But yeah, I did that underneath the clear, so then when I put clear over top of it, it would seal it up, so then it can't be smeared. However, what I do have for red, uh, I just have a red Posca pen as well as a red uh, Hobby Lobby pen. Uh, for some reason, the red when it comes to these, if it's not, if it's the synthetic tip, uh, you gotta like bleed, bleed the pen quite a lot to get it to be useful. The paint doesn't like to actually like come out of it and you can pretty much just do that by pressing the tip down to get a little paint puddle and then use that uh, but the Posca pen it's a little more on the pink side but it's matte um, so it at least lays reliably and then the last one and this one is subjective to use but some form of Gundam marker or very fine uh, line pen so this is not paint, this is pretty much just something to use as body lines. Now it is up to maker's discretion whether or not you want to put body lines on. I do body lines as sometimes the lines are hidden in the clear coat just because of how thick it is, as well as sometimes the car just looks so bland without just, there isn't much happening. So by adding the body line pen, it adds something. Now you can make it a little more faint by putting this underneath of your color coat. However, if the color coat is rather thick, like my cars that I got, it's going to be really hard to see. But if it was something like a very fine mist paint that you're putting on, or it, you know that it's on the thin side, you'd probably put it underneath of that. But would probably recommend a Mr. Super Clear or Workable Fixative 
to spray over top as chances are the paint might not agree being laid over top of that. So now that I went over what we got, how about we start painting? All right, so I'm gonna try and do as much as this as I can with it in front. Uh, definitely the most important thing you want is a comfortable seating position. And normally my comfortable seating position is completely hunched over and impossible to actually film. So we're going to see how well this works. So what you want to do is kind of set up your colors that you're going to use. Um, so pretty much you're going to... Well, the idea is that we are going to use this pen once and once only but in multiple different spots. So we're not gonna use it, go back to something else, and then return, unless absolutely necessary. Because obviously we don't want to contaminate these pens with other colors, but we might be close enough in terms of painting to where that might slightly happen. Uh, it should be, these pens kind of dry fast enough to where uh, I don't need to actually have this car sit. I can do this in a single sitting. So, let's try and do that. So, first thing I want to do, I'm going to take my straight black pen and I'm going to run it in some of these lines here. Now, specifically the windshield lines. Then you can use some angling techniques to try and get as much as you can. Just be careful because chances are, by using masking tape, the channels are a little gunked up. So there's a chance that you can accidentally make the paint pen spit. But you can just smear that off. At least I'm doing this while I'm still awake. Normally I like to do these as a way to get ready for bed. And then bring the car into work the next day to be a showpiece. However, I have off today, so it's still a weekday. And I'd still like to add a car to the collection. So, I'm taking the opportunity to do this. Now, obviously, there's a chance that you might have a greasy area to where the paint might not stick, something like this. Uh, in terms of what I'm doing, we are going to have another color go over top of this area, so at the current point, that is not a problem. The metallic black that I use for plastics uh, tends to lay a little nicer over top of the greasy areas, so this shouldn't be as much of a problem. So now we'll come to the grill, and I feel like if I'm going to slip up, it's going to be here. Now obviously with the extreme over usage of the pen in this area, uh, it's probably going to want to run, especially if it is a runny pen. So don't be surprised if you need to let it sit here for a little. Yep, we're going to dip into that hole. Well, may as well just fill it up. Ooh, I think we dipped too far. Yeah, we are definitely going to have to let this dry, because this is... That cavity is filled with paint. Yep, there goes my fog light hole. So that is going to have to dry for a bit. I 
And you can see the paint thinning in the first one that we did. Now that's not too much of a problem. We don't want to go back and overfill it. Can always wait for that to dry to place another coat of paint. All right, this one might be tricky because it looks like the clear coat might have oversimplified the crevice here. All right, <clears throat> I think just for the sole fact of how runny I made this, <clears throat> gonna let this dry for a little bit and then we'll return. All right, so I believe the black has sit for a little bit. Uh, it's probably not dry enough that we can just immediately go over it with another color, but what we are going to do is at least move into another color. Now we're not gonna do plastics yet, However, I think we can move into our small chrome. Come on, one mil. One mil, okay. So we're gonna do the one mil chrome stuff, so do badging. However, one thing I did forget to do is outline where the exhaust is. So while this spot is going to be plastic color, at least have a line differentiating plastic from the imaginary hole. Something like that. And then we'll have the plastic go around it and then chrome to finish it off. So right now we're going to do a little chrome. So we'll start in the rent back because we do have the grill that we're gonna have to deal with. Oh boy, this might be, actually. Oh God, am I gonna get my face into this? Oh well. So this might be something to do before clear coat, just so then the badging isn't all dunked up with clear. There we go. However, we can also do something like the little dots for the, on the tail lights. something like that and then I almost want to say that there's going to be a ring around that doesn't look the worst. May have been better without it though, but we're gonna continue. Probably gonna be lopsided though. I 
Doesn't help that my hand is jerking about, but that's got it. Then we'll be careful around the front here as we still got real paint. You know what? We're going to hold off on that. We're going to ruin the pen doing that. All right. So we're kind of at a bit of a halt. My grill paint's still a little too wet to put paint around it, which also means my window line paint's probably a little too wet. And we did our chrome there. But I don't exactly want to do... I mean, I guess as long as we don't do the sides, we'll be okay. So I think we'll move into the plastic color. So what we're going to do for plastic is we're going to start off with our felt tip. That's not the felt tip, like we discussed. So pretty much what we're gonna do with the felt tip is we are going to do a thin line where the body color and plastic meet. I am not going to do the sides yet because that is the main place that I grab the car, and especially because it's at the bottom, I am going to booger it up. So let's Go from the side here. Oh yeah, this is difficult. I might need to not do the rear either because... Actually, you know what? No, we'll do the rear. I'll just let it dry. similar to the back. because the paint is about the same we're gonna move into the thick pen and fill the rest in pay attention to our line that we drew back here previously sure if that license area is uh, plastic too. If it is, I'll do that off camera, but yep. And then we're going to leave the sides for later. So now I guess we'll let this dry for quite a bit. Um, get this grill area to not be glossy, and then we'll continue with the plastics. Okay, so... The black is nearly completely dry, at least enough for us to do the plastic around the windows. 
However, what we are going to do right now is do two things that we can do while that dries. And we are first going to do the ambers on the lights. Now, for this car, um, they're not necessarily amber, but it looks like the turn signal is a strip underneath the headlight. So, we'll go and do that. The plastic is, def is dry. Luckily, that stuff dries pretty quick. So, we'll take our pen here. Might just have to play the dabbing game as it is kind of difficult. Can't get a straight line. Oh, we bumped the camera. All right, so now we got our amber color on there. And now the next thing we're going to do is we'll do body lines. This isn't something that needs to be saved for last, just try and watch your finger placement. As you can possibly smear this stuff depending on what you buy. This Gundam marker doesn't, oh shoot. Well, speaking of that, get to show off the smear technique. All right, so I can't, it's not entirely smeared. It's got to be on the listen out. The cat is not doing good. side the other side and we can do the hood and trunk and top now I'm not doing the very bottom line on the side skirt just for the sole fact that that will be done in plastic color so we can kind of just fill that with Now, I would uh, do this around the headlight and taillight, but at least on the headlight, we kind of have fresh paint. Fresh paint there. So I'll stop bumping the camera. Alright, so 
got our bumper there. Ooh. Watch dipping it into the paint. Alright, now we gotta do it across the spoiler. We're just going to roll straight into plastic. I think this is the fabric. Don't. Alright, and then what we're going to do is we can set it on our piece. Alright, so with the plastic guy, we got that. We still have some orange in there, but I think we can fill that with the line pen. And we'll go to this side and do the same. there I got a little mistake over there but I think we can fix that with acetone and I think while we're at it before we take a possible jump cut um, we may as well do the thick window lines so I think before we do this we should go grab a paper towel or at least something to use because out of all the paints that don't like grease, I think this pen hates it the most. So I'm going to at least rub, maybe scuff up this area. Make it clean. And then we'll probably have an over-exaggerated thick line. Nice. And we'll do the same to the back. 
this one a little trickier as the window is not as tall. Oh, I didn't like this one. Too late now. Nice. All right. And I guess while we're at it, we'll take our line pen, fill in that area that we were talking about. Try and keep it away from our fresh plastic paint. All right. And then we'll go to the other side. So revisit our front chrome. We completely forgot about those lines. Alright, now front chrome. One mil. Nice. All right. So, uh, as for the uh, fog lights, that is still way too full of paint to even think about uh, trying to put the chrome in there for that. So we are probably not going to do that. Uh, the black in the back should be good for exhaust. However, that might be the last thing I want to do as I am going to bury that into this table and scuff it up. So, I think the last thing that we want to do is I guess I'll take a jump cut here and go get some acetone. We'll touch up some lines. Then we'll finish off by putting the plastic on the side skirts and doing the exhaust. Alright, we got acetone and we got some micro ear thingies. So, pour a little bit into the cap. And we'll touch up some spots here. So we'll dab a little. Now these aren't the best at soaking up stuff, but it's something. Gotta watch, I don't want to blow through the clear coat.
All right. I think that's pretty good for a touch up. Guess I didn't need that much acetone. Always the chance I'll need it because I'm not done yet. So we'll put that stuff off to the side. And we want to make sure that the hands are dry of acetone. So I guess one thing I ought to try and do, this will be risky, so we're going to use this gloss black and we are going to do the gloss black portion of the front of the car. So, I'm going to try and take the tip here. Oh man, we better get a picture of it so I don't see this thing. Okay, so there is car color in between. Yes, this is off camera. All right, so we got our gloss black. Well, at least it'll be a different black, I hope. Sauce first, or do I do plastic first? I think first, we're going to touch up something around this window. Because for some reason, the tape doesn't like protecting the windows from primers. So we're going to come in and add some fillets. Plastic, so I think we ought to go back and touch that up. All right, touch up first, and then. Okay. And then side skirts and exhaust. Exhaust first. Two mil, two mil, two mil. Definitely juicy pen today. Mm. 
Nice. Alright. Guess we'll do this side plastic first. on that side now to do the other side uh let's see where's the best way place to pick this car up I don't want to touch the side but I'm probably gonna forget and goober it up Streak of black. But I think it was from underneath, so I think we should be. There we go. Yeah, uh, yeah, you did. Uh, see chrome on your fingers all right I'll let this dry uh, I guess I'll clear up the windows and headlights with some paint underneath and then I'll take it to the turntable <laughs> 